Hello again, kids. <laughs> um, so I've been reading through um, some articles with regards to the George Floyd case, and um, I noticed a lot of people commenting some very strange things, and uh, are you serious? <laughs> you you didn't know that? Like, how, this is what amazes me about this country. Everybody seems to be incapable of the most basic understanding of our basic, like, how things work in this country, and it's really fucking disturbing. So I thought I'd make a video real quick, at least about, um, you know, this spe these specific things, uh, because I feel that it bears on the current situation, and it's just good information to have. So um, an article came out that the medical examiner had officially ruled George Floyd's death a homicide. And one woman in the comments, like, lost her shit and was like, why does it take a medical examiner to rule this a homicide. We all saw it. And it's like, you really don't understand how the legal system works, do you, cupcake? <laughs> okay, so to answer <laughs> this rather disturbing question, um, the reason why it takes a medical examiner to do this is because the medical examiner is really the only person who is capable to make that decision. And that doesn't just go in this case. This goes in any case of death, especially any case of death where the circumstances are not quite clear. Typically, you won't really need a medical examination uh, following a death, a postmortem is what it's called. Uh, if, like, say the person's had cancer and they've been dying of cancer for years, you know, and they succumb to the cancer. Generally, you don't really need a medical examination, a postmortem, to determine the cause of death on that. Because we know, especially if that, that person died in the hospital, surrounded by doctors, they were trying to help them, you know, you don't really need a postmortem to determine that. But in the cases of suspicious death or death not by natural causes, you the fucking cat shedding everywhere and it's just like floating and it's pissing me off. In cases such as this, especially after that autopsy that was like, oh no, he just had a bunch of pre-existing conditions and then the cop, you know, picked the wrong time to put his knee on his neck, you know, that is when you need an official, official ruling of homicide because in these cases, the medical examiner making an official ruling of homicide is what's going to start all legal proceedings from there. All of it. You know, so you can't just like have some jackass off the street go like, yep, looks like it's not natural. You need somebody qualified, somebody who is a... a medical doctor, somebody with experience, somebody with the credentials to be able to make that ruling of unnatural death, suspicious death, accidental death, suicide, you know, death from natural causes. For instance, when my mother passed away, uh, we knew that she had congestive heart failure. We knew that she had severe edema. What we didn't know was so much more. There were conditions that my mother had that she didn't tell any of us. Um, you know, and in those particular, because like, guys, when I say it happened fucking quick, I mean, it happened quick. I mean, we had no idea, no idea whatsoever. And then we got the postmortem back and suddenly it all made sense. Um, so with regards to this, this is just another piece of the legal puzzle. That's why you have to have a medical examiner make that official ruling. Secondly, <laughs> I saw somebody say, well, I thought that the medical examiner couldn't make that determination. That had to be the police. Are you fucking serious? Do you honestly think that the cops would actually state, oh yeah, we fucking killed him. It was death by homicide. If that were the case, nobody would ever be prosecuted. 
No, it's not the police. It's not law enforcement's job to make the determination of whether or not the death was a homicide. That's not their job. It's not their job to figure out the why somebody was murdered. It is their job to determine the facts of the case and who fucking did it. That's it. That's all of it. It is the medical examiner's job. The person with the medical degree, it is their job to make a determination of homicide, suicide, natural causes, accidental death, that sort of thing, because they have the credentials. And I know that there are a lot of people saying, well, how could they make that determination? Well, it's really actually, it's a lot easier than it sounds, to be quite honest. When you know how to speak that language, and you know, let's face facts here, kids. Any kind of specialty profession has its own language, right? We're all speaking English, but it all has its own language. Law is no different. Medical examination, no different. The human body, no different. And so if you know how to speak that language, you can see it real fucking easy. There are certain ways that certain conditions behave in the body that if those conditions are not present, something else fucking did it. <laughs> The original autopsy report that came out was like, oh no, it was all these pre-existing medical conditions and the cop just fucking happened to put his knee on the back of his neck at the wrong time. Whoops. Guess he just picked himself a whole bouquet of oopsie daisies. No. The medical examiner takes a look at the contusions in this particular case. And I'm just guessing, mind you, I haven't read the autopsy report. I'm sure it hasn't been released. I'm sure it's not going to be released. But in this particular case, I'm guessing, I'm educatedly guessing that there were contusions, there was probably some bleeding, there was probably, um, you know, marks on the neck alone to say nothing of the condition of the lungs, if there was any fluid in the lungs, any petechial hemorrhaging in the eyes that, or around the lips, around the mouth, maybe even in the fingertips that would show asphyxiation. And asphyxiation, when you just have the fluid in the lungs, when you just have the petechial hemorrhaging in the eyes, when you just have it inside the mouth, when you just have it at the fingertips, you there's a number of things that could cause that. Accidental death being one of them. But when you combine petechial hemorrhaging, fluid in the lungs, with contusions or bleeding, internal bleeding in the neck, contusions means ruptured blood. It's basically a, a kind of a light bruise or a scrape or a, a, a mark on the neck or really anywhere, but a mark that clearly did not happen naturally. When you take those combined together, that's called the totality of the circumstances. When you take the totality of the circumstances together, that says homicide. Okay. A cop is not qualified to make that determination. He's just not. A medical examiner, somebody who has a medical degree, somebody who went to medical school and has done this work for X number of years, has the qualifications by which to make that determination. So going forward in these cases, remember that there are certain functions and there's reasons behind everything that is done. Try to recall <laughs> that in theory, if not always in practice, in theory, my cats are bitching to get the fuck out of this room. And I don't even know why they didn't even know they were under the bed fucking around until I closed that door to make this video. And then all of a sudden we must get out. <laughs> Good Lord, I'm tired. It's been a long day, y'all. Um, remember going forward in these cases that in theory, if not always in practice, in theory, our legal system is meant to be self-checking. It's meant to have a system of checks and balances put into place. One of those checks and balances is the requirement of a medical examiner or a coroner to make the official ruling of homicide, suicide, etc. 
So when you're going forward in these cases, try to steer clear of such a simplistic view of why did they need a medical examiner to say it? We all saw it. That's why, because there's a legal requirement that says that that needs to happen. That's why. So moving forward, keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go to bed. I'm fucking tired. It was a long day. It was a really long day. <laughs> And they're only going to get longer. Jesus. Okay, kids. Thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to me here on YouTube. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Mama Phoenix 6 And if you boogie on over to the About page here on my channel, you'll find everything from my Pinterest boards to my Facebook fan page.